Welcome to another installment of You Can't Beat the Drums. You may be wondering, gee, why does Chris look so disheveled? He's got beard stubble growth and doesn't seem like his normal put-together self. Well, that's because I had to get up a little earlier than normal today because I wasn't expecting to have to do this, but I got a lead on a Tama drum set with what might be some pretty decent cymbals for $200. Now, I'm actually working on another set that I just bought for another video to fix up and sell that drum set. And so I'm going to have two sets at once. But this seems like an opportunity I couldn't miss. So I'm on my way to Gig Harbor to take a look at a Tama Swing Star. I'm not sure how good this shot is going to be since I'm filming through my windshield. But I wanted you to see the Narrows Bridge. This was the bridge that a long time ago blew down and fell into the <laughs> fell into the water but they rebuilt two of them so now there are two bridges going over the, the Tacoma Narrows and here we have the one on the right which is the original bridge that replaced the one that fell in the water and then the bridge on the left is the brand new one when I say brand new it's a few years old now but much newer than the green one we're traveling on and I don't know if you'll be able to see the incredible scenery and the sound out the window but I'm gonna give it a try let's see can you see that that is the sound it's quite beautiful it's not a sunny day today it's kind of overcast but I don't know if you can really see that but it is absolutely stupendous and Gig Harbor it's interesting the name Gig Harbor it's because in this small town there are more musical events than anywhere in the country. More gigs than any... No, that's not really true. It's actually named from a discovery in 1840 when a Captain Wilkes took his longboat into the little cove. And the longboat is called a Captain's Gig. That's another name for it. So that's where Gig Harbor got its name. Just thought you'd want to know that historical fact. It has nothing to do with music. Well, we're just about there. I'll tell you, this is a beautiful part of the country, all right. The politics may be kind of goofy at times, but talk about beautiful green trees and everything else. It's just lovely. So we're just about to get there. I'm not sure if the person's going to let me film them or not, but we'll find out. This is the drum set, and this is the owner. What was your name again? Derek. Derek. So, Derek, you were telling me about this drum set, the history behind it. Why don't you let our viewers know what about this set was special to you and why you've decided to sell it? Uh, so, yeah, I got the set uh, back when I was in high school. Um, started playing drums when I was, I don't know, probably about eighth grade, high school-ish, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a pretty good pet band in our high school, so I really wanted to play. I was playing on the school's uh, drum set. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so I got this one to, to practice and, you know, played with kind of a early low-key band a little bit in high school. What kind of music did you play? Mostly just like rock stuff, you know, really liked a lot of rock music. So just playing, uh, you know, trying to like play, play my favorite songs and stuff, right? So what was your favorite song on the drums? Oh, man, I really like a lot of Metallica. <laughs> Heavy so, metal stuff, you huh? know. Um, just like anything from that, uh, just, you know, <laughs> lots of like, kind of like older stuff. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun to play. Um, and I have kids now who are kind of interested. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently I played on a, uh, a friend of mine has an electric set, mm -hmm. um, which I've never, I've never played on. Um, and so this one was relatively new and I was like, wow, this thing's like, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. You know? So you're moving to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I, I, I like this. Um, but playing on that one, I was like, wow, this is, like, surprisingly good, you know? And then also, like, my kids have kind of dabbled in it a little bit. And, you know, I'm like, it would be convenient to for them at least to be able to put their track on, plug in with headphones, and, like, they mm -hmm. can play and not, like, you know... Destroy the neighborhood. The, the yeah. entire house and neighborhood is like, what is going on, you know? That's funny. So, how, yeah, old, I, how old are your kids? Um, uh, between four and a half and nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I started playing drums when I was four years old, actually. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get into it until, you know, a little bit later. I was like 
13-ish. I had this exact same practice pad, however. Yeah, yeah. You know, some stuff sticks around. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this is a, a very good deal. $200 for the whole thing, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a great price, and I'll get her cleaned up. It's actually in pretty good shape now. And then maybe add a couple of symbols and, and so on, maybe switch around, maybe make them all Zildjian, not sure. But And then I'll pass it along to someone else who... Hopefully, will be a worthy recipient of this great uh, Tama drum set. I have a lot of Tama hardware that I like. So, uh, great meeting you. I guess we'll get her packed up and, and out the door she'll right. go. Sounds good. Before I start cleaning all these pieces up and taking all the drums apart and all that sort of thing, I'm going to deal with a few minor things out here in the garage. First thing I'll probably do is clean the cymbals. I'm sort of torn because I don't really want to wipe off this Peisty logo and I've never really cleaned a lot of Peisty symbols recently so I don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna fare when I use the barkeepers friends if it takes off the logo I might be annoyed we'll have to play around with it and see and then this big ride symbol I showed you in the last shot I can't remember what brand it is it's a uh, kind of a lower end brand I brand I think it's a uh, of course the logo on the other side there it is oh it's Avanti I always thought that was a fiberglass car made in the 60s, but I'll probably try to clean that up a little bit too and take the scotch tape off the edges because as you can see, somebody put scotch tape on those. I'm probably going to go ahead and take these completely apart and clean them though. They look in okay shape, but they've been sort of derelict and dusty and unused it looks like. A few other things too I want to do is like these cowbells, that uh, bolt is completely snapped off so i'm gonna have to use an easy out or something and see if i can get that figured out see if i have a wing bolt that will replace that along with i'll need a wing nut there that nuts a little on the old uh, frayed side and then this thing is kind of odd it's what is that it's kind of a yeah it's just a nut not a wing nut so i've got a little work to do on the cowbell situation haven't really looked too much at these. Looks like it needs a felt washer on the bottom of the hi-hat stand. A few other minor things that need to be addressed, I suppose. And then there's some sticky tape, rough stuff here to keep the foot from sliding, I guess. But I'll probably take those off because they look kind of lame. And then this is kind of interesting. This is a bag o' goodies. Let's find out what's in the bag o' goodies. You never know when you buy a set like this what you're going to get. So let's... I empty this out. This apparently, this is an Avanti bag. It must have come with the symbol. Looks a little small to house the symbol, however, so I'm not sure what was in it. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, we have a an old beater that's kind of beat. I guess I could maybe try to clean that up, and then if I can get it clean, maybe some bleach or something. That might be a might be a nice thing to have. You never know. Here's part of a. That looks like part of a uh, foot pedal. It looks like that's for a toe uh, stop, which I always take off because I have size 13 feet. These toe stops always make my heels stick off the end of the, <laughs> end of the pedal. Here's an old, looks like an old Tom holder of some sort or maybe something to do with a, a marching drum, perhaps. Because This is definitely something from a marching drum right here. That obviously rests against your leg, I suppose, and that attaches to the drum. I, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I was marching in high school, so I can't remember. Uh, let's see, a couple of extra felt washers. You never have too many of those. Maybe, now those are too small for the hi-hat. More brackets that look like they're from a marching band. Here's an old, old throw-off. This is interesting. What brand is that? Uh, WFL. Anyway, kind of interesting. And then a couple of, looks like, bass drum uh, flag bolts. Here's a couple of, I think this one looks like seen better days. I wonder if that would work on one of those cowbell things. We'll have to find out. Let's see, what else? This is an interesting item. Looks like a drum key. A sort of three-in-one drum key, I suppose. And that's... Uh, Tamas, that must go with the kit. There's a few extra lug bolts. Yeah, those are always handy to have. And another sort of an old Tom mount. 
Uh, oh, that's the part off the snare drum stand. It was missing one of the little bars to tighten the basket. And there it is right there. Well, that's cool. An extra little Ludwig snare holder. That holds the string or plastic strap to hold the snares on. And then, of course, look. <laughs> I, I've always wanted a 7 16th quarter inch socket. And now I have one. I didn't even pay extra for it. All right, well, I'm going to put this on, and then I'm going to dress those cowbells, and then probably first thing I'll do is clean the cymbals, just to annoy everybody that's watching who hates it when I clean cymbals. <laughs> With the help of this Easy Out kit, which is actually not an expensive one, it's Pittsburgh, probably came from Harbor Freight or somewhere. Anyway, you drill a hole, you use these little extractors and this little uh, device here, and once you drill the hole in the top of the broken off bolt, you use this to actually extract it. Once you drill the hole, this uh, sort of reverse grabbing tool, which is one of these, they have different size ones, of course, basically then allows you to unscrew it. And because the larger device has now threaded itself into the screw, and as you loosen it, the screw comes out like so pretty soon it's freed up and you can remove it from the from the arm and then get rid of the old screw and see if we can get a new one to fit why do you keep all that junk my wife says why do you have boxes and boxes of parts you'll never use my wife says well these parts I've been saving are valuable. And here is a perfect example. The cowbell tree is now repaired. You'll notice I have a bolt there and a nice uh, receiving wing nut there and a nice wing nut there. And they all work beautifully. And this has now been resurrected and is completely usable, which is exactly what I was hoping. And all with parts I had just laying around from other drum projects. This goes to prove without a shadow of a doubt that saving every little bit, piece, bolt, part, nut is definitely something worth doing. All right, so I used a little bit of that goof off and got rid of that weird tape that was on the bass drum pedal, so that's clean now. And there's also a strange hole that was much larger than a typical lug bowl right over here. And I happen to have a big Phillips head screw. It was a really large hole that was threaded and I figured well okay I'll just use the large screw I've got, cut it down a size and fill the hole. I don't like open screw holes so now it's doubly strong. That thing's not going to go anywhere. And remember that dirty old bass drum beater? Well I decided to clean it so I used, first of all I used lacquer thinner. I figured I have nothing to lose and if it dissolves it fine and it worked pretty well I got it pretty clean then I thought well I'll try a little goof off that did nothing so that didn't do anything to it and then I tried a little tide and some uh, soap and water and all those together made it look pretty good so that's that's presentable I think that would, would embarrass me on a bass drum uh, bass drum pedal of course <laughs> you could buy one of those online for like two dollars so I probably spent more than that just trying to fix it up but you know I don't like throwing things away so in this regard, I've now kept something that would have been tossed and it'll live to beat another day. It's back to the laundry room once again. Symbol cleaning time. This time I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try the barkeeper's friend liquid version. See if that makes any difference. I usually use the powdered version and that usually makes the symbols look gorgeous, but it does eliminate the logos most of the time. I'd like to keep these logos on the symbols if I could. We will see how that works as I get busy with the cloths and the barkeeper's friend polishing like crazy. Also, I'll try to get rid of the tape on the symbol, a little scotch tape. Maybe somebody hung a welcome home sign or maybe a Merry Christmas sign. And the drum set was given to someone as a gift and the sign hung gleefully from the ride symbol. Or maybe people just stuck tape on it. Anyway, I'll get those cleaned up. We'll see how they sound and see how they look as we move ahead with the Tama drum set purchase. Oh, I have friends here too, by the way. There's Remo there. Hi, Remo. And there's Benjamin. Hi, Benji. They love it when I polish cymbals because they get to you know, chew on my pant legs. 
Here we go. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. These symbols look beautiful. I used the liquid Barkeeper's Friend, and it was pretty good. A little too gentle, though. I ended up using the powdered with the liquid, and that worked really well. You'll notice that the top hi-hat logo's faded a little bit, but the good news is it's still there. The bottom head wasn't very dirty, so its logos are pretty much unscathed. The Zildjian surprised me because those normally go away pretty quickly, but I got this thing totally polished up, and the logo still are looking really good. This one's a tiny bit faded, you can kind of see, but still looks great. This one already had some scratches on it, so very little of that came off. And that symbol actually is kind of a weird one. I hadn't really heard of Avanti before, except for that fiberglass car I mentioned earlier, but it really doesn't sound too bad. It sounds pretty good, in fact. Very acceptable. I'm going to actually use these and play a gig on Sunday for a surprise party. By the time this video gets released, it won't be a surprise anymore, so I can talk freely about it without getting wrestled to the ground by Secret Service. Anyway, these symbols look fantastic. I know people get all bent out of shape because, oh, you shouldn't clean your symbols because they sound terrible when you clean them. No, they don't. They sound great. They look great. So if you don't like cleaning your symbols, then you can just skip over this part. I think they're wonderful. And now it's on to the rest of the set to see if we can make that look beautiful too. Step one is to get the stands cleaned up. I'm going to do the stands before I tackle the drums themselves now that I have all the cymbals done. Again, I use the Steel Wool 0000, which will scratch steel but will not scratch chrome. I suppose if you rubbed hard enough and abrasively enough, maybe it would damage chrome. But if you use a light touch, the chrome actually then stops looking like that and starts looking a lot shinier. I'll show you a little before and after shot here in just a second, but uh, I will get to work now. Rubber gloves on hand and see if I can get the stand to look like new. Stand by. Here is the after version of the stand. You can see that after using the steel wool and a little microfiber cloth, it looks extremely good. You'll notice the difference in the shininess of the stand as opposed to what it looked like just a moment ago. So it does pay off. Now there's still a few minor issues. One of the rubber feet is cracked slightly. You can see there, of course, there's the protective <laughs> sheet on the couch. That's why good husbands never do this on the normal sofa or furniture. They always put down an old bed sheet to protect the furniture. <clears throat> except the dogs have already kind of trashed what's underneath anyway. But the stand also is missing one little part here, it kind of rubbed off, a little rubber on the edge there. I'm not sure if that's a big deal, probably not. Uh, I could put some maybe black silicone rubber or something on there, but I think I'll probably leave it as long as you don't over tighten the stand. It shouldn't do any damage to the snare drum. In fact, the rim might hit the part underneath that little metal part, not sure. Anyway, still, stand looks really good. Hopefully all the stands will look that good when I'm finished. In cleaning the hi-hat stand, I discovered something. There was a weird kind of a clicking noise as I tried to use it. I looked closer and found out that the rod was bent a little bit, so I kind of straightened that out, no problem. However, I looked at the bottom, and look what I discovered. The bottom is very bent. Can you see that, how bent that is? That is bent. So I got to figure that out and get that straightened out. But even worse, the little plastic or nylon piece is kind of shredded. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to get this thing in focus. Ah, back in the old days when you had a Super 8, it was so much easier. Anyway, this is obviously broken. I'm going to see if I can find a nylon piece or some way of making this work with the spring that's inside. I'm afraid there might be little pieces of nylon inside the hi-hat stand. So. Let's just uh, take a look, shall we? Kind of turn this upside down and shake it a little bit. And there's the spring. Hmm, I'm not seeing any pieces of nylon, but I'm going to have to obviously put some kind of a, a, a piece in there so that the spring doesn't just slip up the post and render the Hyatt stand useless. Good thing I found this before the big gig on uh, Sunday. <laughs> I'll keep you posted on how this works out. Here in the garage, I managed to get this thing straightened out using the small, dainty little vise I've got here. So that is now straight. 
And what I did was I had some nylon bushings left over from some project, who knows when and where, but in another example of why you save everything, never throw anything away, I found this little nylon bushing. And then of course using a razor blade and a grinding wheel, very primitive peat, I managed to cut it down. <laughs> it's a very crude, but effective because you'll see it slides on here just perfectly, hits that washer, which prevents it from going any further than it should. And then lo and behold, the spring fits right on it and fits just like it's supposed to. So there you have it. And then on the bottom, I think there's a pad or something that's supposed to prevent the pedal from whacking up against the bottom of the stand when it gets moved. So I'm gonna see if I have an old felt washer that's small that I can use for that. Then this Hyatt stand should be good as new. Okay, I got it put back together again and I actually found a nut inside the tube. Don't know how it got there because the nut in this piece isn't missing down in there. So I got the nut out of there and I fixed it underneath to tighten against that bracket so that it won't get loose with playing. And there's that felt washer that I inserted in there. So now the thing is totally smooth. The pipe doesn't bang against the bent rod. There's a nylon piece in there pushing against the spring. So this thing is really working well now. So that's kind of a success story. Things have all been cleaned and polished now, including the shell. Looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. I had all my screws and washers all carefully set aside from the lugs sitting on the sofa. And then I stood up, and the sofa bounced, and they all got mixed up. So now I have to figure all that out. What a pain. Another thing I discovered is this quick throw-off device. This is the muffler, and these Tamas have a special knob you turn them and they you know quick on quick off a quick release knob and what i found was that there was a piece of plastic bouncing around inside and it had broken off internally so what i did was i used super glue to glue the piece back in place but since i don't trust super glue sorry about all the blurriness my phone doesn't like to focus apparently phone focus anyway i as you can see used a little of that sort of jb weld stuff I can get into the light here, get a little better view, uh, to sort of reinforce it. So that means it'll probably, <laughs> this is, there we go. So you can see the little plastic part in there, right? And the JB weld that I sort of stuck in there to reinforce it so it won't break off. So that was another little repair I did that's pretty good. Now this I used on the shell primarily. I've used this before, I'm out of it. Now I gotta buy another one if they still even make it. I've had this thing for about 30 years. Anyway, it works really well on the shell. I'm reticent to use the steel wool, which is there, that's at zero, 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 on the shell because even though it looks chrome, it's actually more steel than chrome. The chrome plating on the lugs and even the rims stands up to that steel wool. There's no real scratching or anything. It just makes them look great. But on these types of shells, you have to be very careful because you will scratch the surface if you are not careful. So this shell, when I put it all together, is going to look great. There's a few minor scratches you can see that uh, happen with many, many years of use. In fact, if you see the reflection in the drum, you'll see some wrinkles on me from many, many years of use. Anyway, I'll show you the finished product once I get it all put back together again. Interestingly, I was working on this so intently that I forgot about church. So my wife and I were both involved in projects. That means instead of Saturday night service, we have to go tomorrow morning, which means I have to get up early, which is a pain. But as if a sign from heaven was to tell me that I could miss church tonight, look what array arrived today, just about an hour ago. Yes, it is the brand new snare drum head for this very snare drum. So obviously it's a sign that I should stay home tonight and finish putting together the Tama snare drum. Before I take the drums apart and clean them, I thought I'd try something with the heads. You know, I use that Griot's buffing machine to get the heads looking really nice. Maybe not brand new, but pretty close. But these Tom heads had some dents in them. And I remember online, I saw a guy using a hair dryer to get some of the dents out of drum heads. And I actually tried it and it kind of works. So I figured I got nothing to lose since these are used heads only. And I can always replace them with new heads if this melts through them. But I was gonna try this life hack on the drum heads to get rid of the dents. It's kind of a drum hack. 
I don't know why they use that word hack. That's so dumb. It's a life hack. Use a used toothpaste tube to keep rats out of your peanut butter jars. Those kind of goofy things. Anyway, this, uh, this hack is not the kind of hack you get when you smoke too much and start coughing. No, this is a hack that could get, save you some money on drum heads. Let's find out, shall we? First of all, I will get the heater. I will get the drum with the drum head. And let's find out if this hack works. So we'll turn the old heater on. Start aiming it at the little dents. Let's see if it works. Oh, first of all, there's the before. Uh, let's see if I can get this where you can see some of the dents in it. You can kind of see little dents on it. There you go. Get that light reflecting on it. There's a big dent right there. All right. So here we go. We'll just get this old hair dryer focused on the dent. And it's getting hotter and hotter. And the dent is still there. Now it's getting really hot. I wonder if the fact this is a hydraulic head, if that has anything to do with the hack not working. Now it's still there. Hmm. Okay, well I finished hacking and amazingly, let me show you what happened. The stick marks are all still there, of course, but I don't know if you can see this, but the dents are almost completely gone. Now, you can't tell very much because of all the stick marks, as I say, but the head is now smooth on the top, even though it doesn't really look like it in the video. I will polish this with the Griot's polishing machine, and you will see this head will end up looking fantastic with no dents. I'm now going to do this on the other tom and the floor tom, and by the time I get done, I think I might have some heads that look pretty good. The question, of course, is will they sound good? Because some people have argued that when you do this to a head, it stretches it out or makes it brittle or who knows what else. So this head actually has a muffler mounted underneath it. I'm going to, of course, take those out so you'll have the open sound. If people want to put rings to muffle it, fine. They can be Lord of the Rings if they want to. But I'm going to take it all apart, get them buffed, take out the muffling rings, put it back together, and the true test, the proof will be in the pudding if, in fact, it still sounds good. So stand by. We'll find out, won't we, Benji? Say goodbye, Benji. Oh, here comes Remo. Come on, Remo. There you go. There's Remo on my right, Benji on my left. They're excited, too, as you can tell. By the way, another thing I'm going to have to do is get rid of this duct tape on the bottom head. Goo gone or goof off. Both seem to work pretty well to get the residue off of these drums that have duct tape all over them. So uh, we'll be addressing that as well. And you'll see the finished product once I'm all done cleaning these things up. I have all the Tom hardware polished now using this uh, 0000 steel wool. So it didn't get scratched, but it sure got clean and shiny, which you'll see when I'm done. Now it's on to the bass drum. And the bass drum has this bizarre thing on it, which as I mentioned in my last video, as I played a gig, it wore through the duct tape and my bass drum pedal beater began sticking to the head, greatly reducing the alacrity with which I could play. The other thing is when I took the toms apart, they had different uh, mounting hardware. This is from a floor tom, it appears. That's what I've seen on old Tama floor toms before. The other attachment is like a floor tom leg from this set. This looks like a floor tom mount from an older set. And it also had been bent out. The nut being tightened, the wing nut being tightened, has pushed the side out. So I sort of squished it back together. And then I used some JB Weld on the inside, I don't know if you can see that, to sort of strengthen it. I might have put a little bit thicker layer in there, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be okay. That stuff's pretty strong. And that should reinforce the metal so it doesn't bend out again like it did before. We shall see. Anyway, on to the bass drum. Use a little goof off, some rags, and we'll try to remove that and see what lies underneath it. Hopefully not a hole. And I will show you the results momentarily. These are the top heads of the 
toms. I'm going to go ahead and try to use my, and there's the bass drum head, by the way. That's got a little bit of scuff mark on it. You can see, I don't think that's going to come out, but I'm going to try it anyway because I have my handy dandy Griot's buffing machine again and the little pads there. I'm going to try the correcting cream, which is designed for heavy scuffs and scratches first. Try to get as many of the stick marks off of the heads as I can. And then I'm going to try this liquid 3-in-1 wax. It's supposed to get rid of swirl marks and add a glossy protection in one step. I've never tried that on the drums before or the drum heads. I don't think we need wax on the drum heads necessarily. But hey, if it gets rid of swirl marks, maybe that's a good thing. And then I'll try that same approach on the drum shells. And we'll see what I can do about getting rid of the scratches and scuffs on the drum shells. As I mentioned, there's some really bad tom rash on the bass drum, which can't be taken care of unless you have cosmetic surgery or something or rewrap it, which I'm not going to do. But still, by the time I get done, it should look good. Another, you know, free advertisement for griots. <laughs> One thing I forget to mention is that I put a carpet or some sort of a pad underneath when I'm buffing so that the buffing material will be pushing on something solid rather than the head dipping down like that, in which case the buffing wouldn't be as effective. So just a little tip for those of you at home following along, attempting to duplicate my mastery of buffing. <laughs> Here's the before and after. I haven't actually done this head yet, and you can see what it looks like. And then compare that to the heads I've already done, like these two. And I think you can see that, you know, these look certainly better. They're not perfect by any means. They still have drum marks, drumstick marks, and so forth. And they'll be better when they're actually on the drum and sort of stretched out a little bit, I'm sure. But still, when you compare those to this, I would say that little buffing is definitely worth the price of admission. There you go. That's before and then that's the after. So I think it's pretty obvious. The little elbow grease and griots, waxes, and so forth does the trick. Bass drum head turned out pretty nicely too. Oh look, you can see my terrible shorts, my ripped up old work clothes in the reflection. That's how shiny it is. Amazing. I must confess, I haven't touched this stuff for more than two weeks because my wife and I were on vacation. Everything's polished, ready to go, ready to be assembled. You can see everything's all shiny. When I get this put back together, we'll see how it looks. The bass drum I did do this morning after I woke up and it looks pretty good. A little Tom rash on the top, which I mentioned earlier, it's a shame, but I buffed it as well as I could and it actually turned out looking very nice and probably will sound good too. It's got a um, hydraulic head on the batter head, which is nice. And I also found one of those little beater pad things I can put on the bass drum head to protect it from getting a hole as the beater pounds mercilessly on it. If, if the person that buys it's a heavy metal player, that is. Yes, I have uh, been away for two and a half weeks. As you can see, I will show you a brief shot of uh, what I look like after not shaving for two weeks. Yes, this is what I look like after not shaving for two weeks. Pretty pathetic. I almost look like Grizzly Adams, except I don't have enough beard to even look manly. I just look scruffy. That's why I shave, because my beard making capabilities are pathetic. Anyway, on with the drum, the drum assembly. Toms are now finished, put together. They look really good, all waxed and shiny. And the heads that I buffed look pretty good. They don't say Remo anymore, but that's okay. I said bass drum most time. I'm going to set them up now and see what they sound like all together. I tuned the heads pretty low. This set is kind of a rock and roll set, in my opinion. I think it worked for jazz, too, of course, with the right heads and so forth. But the bottom heads are pretty inexpensive. They're the heads that came with the set. And they're so thin that if you try to tune things too low, they end up sounding kind of thwacky. Thwacky, is that a word? Let's see, if I look it up, uh, let me go to the Google here. Hmm, thwacky, of thwack, to be thwack-like, thwacky. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, the uh, top, top heads are kind of dead because they're the double heads, you know, those sort of hydraulic type pinstripes. And so low they sound pretty good even without muffling rings and that sort of thing if you tighten them up though they do sound pretty dead with the lower resonant heads having to be so tight so they don't thwack thinner heads on these would make them more toneful is that another word toneful 
they'd have more tone and ring than with these dead sounding heads. But I think for rock and roll, this is what you want. If somebody wants to make it into a jazz kit, they can get some thinner heads, tighten them up, and it'll probably sound uh, pretty nice that way too. The drum shells are in pretty good shape. Again, a few scratches and things, but the buffing really helped make them look shiny and beautiful. And plus I had a lot of help with Remo and Benji. They helped me out by keeping me company. Here is the set in its final ready to be sold state. You'll notice it does look pretty shiny and beautiful. Again, a little tom rash on the bass drum, but you can't see it too badly. There's a little bit there you can see. But with it all buffed up and polished, it's not too shabby looking. Sounds pretty good. It's got really good cymbals, as I mentioned. I added this cymbal stand to it, a little double brace sound percussion. And of course, this extra 16 inch heavy cymbal, a 13 inch crash. And then I swapped out the 17 inch for a 16 inch. Um, I decided I would use that 17 on one of my other kits. I have a 16 I replaced it with, which is this one. And this is a very, very good sounding cymbal. So no real problem there. In fact, I think it sounds excellent with this kit. There's the ride, that Avanti. The cowbell, there was two cowbells came with it. I'm gonna keep one of them, the blue one. The black one is a Tama, goes with the set. So I went ahead and replaced the Tom, uh, excuse me, the uh, cowbell mount there with a much better one. The one that came with the set was pretty torn up and terrible. It didn't even clamp very well. So I exchanged that with a better one, put a new snare head on, like I mentioned. The drum throne is a lot better now. It's a, it's a Tama, heavy-duty Tama throne. So I added all this stuff to it, added the extra cymbals, the cymbal stand and everything, and I think I'm going to ask $550 for this based on all the parts I had to add, the work I did, the cleaning supplies, the wing nuts and cymbal toppers and extra cymbal extension arm and that on top of the regular cymbal stand, the Zildjian cymbals. I think that's a pretty good price because the set sounds really good. We'll hear it in just a second once I get the mic set up. Again, I apologize because the mic I use is a single mic. The phone doesn't record in stereo. The mic's just sort of sitting here off to the side. You can see it there. Not a real expensive mic, but it'll give you some idea of how this set sounds. It really sounds pretty good. The heads, as I mentioned, are all cleaned up and everything. And I have them a little bit lower than I would normally tune drums to, unless I was playing rock and roll. This, of course, set would be a great rock set. But switch out the heads if you like a good jazz set, too. Anyway, let me play a little bit. Again, I have been on vacation. I don't practice anymore. I'm out of shape. Don't get all critical in the comments section. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what it sounds like.
people who are interested in the kit because they missed out on the last kit that I sold. They got a hold of me too late. And I told them I would contact them first about this before I listed it. So I sent them a couple of private messages. I told them 550 bucks, you can have it. They're both thinking about it, gonna see if they can come up with the money. In a couple of days, I'm gonna go ahead and list it and see if I can get somebody to uh, pony up 550 bucks for this kit. I think it's a pretty good deal. I'm making about $30 profit, I think, maybe. Of course, again, as I mentioned in a previous video, if you take a look at the time involved, I made probably about 25 cents an hour, but it's not because I, for the money, that's all I do it. I do it because this set was getting dusty, wasn't getting used, the symbols were all dirty, and now it looks good, it sounds good, and somebody's gonna be able to use it at a pretty reasonable price. Until, of course, the next video, when I'll do it all over again. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, that's always helpful. Aha, sounds like a drum person. Hi, come on in. How are you? My name is Tristan. Tristan? Yes. Nice to meet you. My name is Chris, and uh, thanks for coming in. There's the drum set there, and uh, I know you mentioned you were interested in it. Tell me why you're interested in the drums. Uh, well, uh, if, you can, if you can take your mask off if you want, it's okay. up to you. Uh, well, I have a, a eight-year-old boy, and oh. uh, he's starting to learn uh, taking lessons. Um, so I, I want to get him a set so he can. Well, that's cool. What's his name? Uh, Curtis. Curtis. So yes. Curtis is eight years old. And you're thinking about getting this set for Curtis. That's pretty cool. This is a pretty, pretty nice kit for an eight-year-old. You're a good dad. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm playing the bass, so oh, very I was cool. in the band, so I don't want to buy a, a cheap one. Right, you know, right. Uh, something you know, just decent. That's a little bit better quality. Well, no, this, last long. You know. Yeah, I think you'll, I think you'll like this. Uh, so you, you play bass. He plays drums. Anybody else in your family play well, drums? Oh, I have a, a nine years old that is learning piano. So. so you're going to be like the Partridge family. <laughs> oh, you need a bus, you drive around the country. <laughs> anyway, we'll, see. well let's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the drums and okay. show you what, kind of what they're like. I'll just kind of get this angled over here a bit. And you probably saw a lot from the pictures and so forth. Uh, they're in pretty good shape. There's a, uh, a Tama throw that goes with it. The cymbals are, are nice because you've got Feisty 2002. Here, it's very, it's a really a heavy symbol. It actually works like a ride symbol too. You can use that very like that, or it's a loud crash. And you've got a 13-inch splash, another a 16-inch Zildjian, and then this Avanti ride, which really sounds good. Even though I've never heard of Avanti, you can get a cowbell with it. Oh, okay. So. Uh, But uh, anyway, new head here. Um, so actually, not a not a bad little kit, especially uh, for an eight year old. I think it'll last them a long time, probably. Yeah. Um, and I want a good quality sound, so mm -hmm. I want to go out um, and, and buy some like a starter set. That right. Doesn't sound. Yeah. Well, Tama's is good. This I think is probably a mid to lower line of Tama, but Tama is a good quality set. And the cymbals, that's where you really tend to hear the difference. If you get cheap cymbals, they sound terrible. And these are all pretty good quality cymbals. These are you know, very good uh, A Zildjian's, which are really good. So I think, uh, yeah, I think so this will last a long time. This is everything, right? You get everything here except the cloth on the floor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. You want to go ahead and do it? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. We'll start packing it up. Okay. Well, Curtis has got a nice surprise uh, coming here pretty quick when this thing arrives home. I want to thank you again very much. Really nice meeting you. And I hope your son really enjoys this and that when you and he get completely famous, you'll come back and see me. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Well, 550 bucks. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. And hopefully that set will last that family for many, many years to come. Now it's onward and upward as I try to find another set that needs a little TLC that I can restore back to its former glory and pass on to someone who is deserving. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. That's important. It allows me to continue to do these videos and you can send this link to someone you know who likes drums. Maybe they'll get a kick out of it too. Thanks for watching.